I honestly can't remember the last time I did one of these proper sit down videos for you, but I am excited to get back into it, although I'm still feeling a little rusty, but hopefully I have an insightful video for you today because as you might have noticed, both my personal style and my lifestyle have changed quite a bit in the past couple of years. And I'm at a point where I feel comfortable starting to let go of things that no longer get me excited. So today I thought it would be fun for us to discuss everything that there is to know about buying and selling luxury online. We're going to be looking at some of the major players in this sphere. And I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the pros and cons of each one, both when it comes to buying and selling luxury. And I wanted to discuss how to put your mind at ease when it comes to this big question of authenticity, because obviously that is still a big barrier for I feel a lot of people, rightfully so, when it comes to buying luxury pieces from resellers or really anywhere outside of the store. So if that sounds interesting to you and you'd like to hear my thoughts on which platforms to turn to and which ones to avoid when it comes to buying and selling luxury, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. We have no time to waste because there is a lot I would like to discuss in today's video. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. And let's start with one of the biggest platforms out there, which is Vestir Collective. Now what makes Vestir Collective quite different from all the other places that we'll be looking at is that Vestir Collective is a marketplace rather than a reseller themselves, even though at this point they do have their own stock and they do have stock on hand initially, or I should say originally, they started out as sort of an eBay dedicated to luxury. And to this day, they are still one of the biggest marketplaces for buying and selling luxury pre-loved. In fact, at this point, they not only sell luxury, but really anything slightly designer. I mean, you can even buy high street pieces on Vestir Collective and they're all about recycling and breathing new life into pieces that you no longer want to have in your collection. Now, the biggest pro of Vestir Collective is the sheer amount of pieces and brands available. If you are really into thrifting and treasure hunting, I think you will really enjoy Vestir Collective because they have the biggest selection of pieces and they are able to do that because most things are not actually part of their stock. Most of these things will never go through Vestir Collective. Instead, they just allow users to use their platform to sell pieces online and then they take a pretty hefty commission when a sale actually goes through. So if you are really into digging for some hidden gems, I think you will really enjoy browsing on Vestir Collective. However, this is also a con because it is simply just not the most luxurious experience. The user face is not really pretty. It can be quite glitchy. It can take a long time for you to find pieces. The images are not the clearest, even images that are taken by Vestir Collective themselves, because at this point, I think you can consign pieces through Vestir Collective, especially if you live in places like New York or Paris, where they do have their own showrooms, they do make it easier for you to sell things. But if you do not, you will have to take your own pictures or you will have to rely on the seller, which is not always the most luxurious experience. But if you don't mind digging through a ton of postings, I think it can be quite fun, which is also a pro. So if you are into thrifting, this is the best way to do it. They do have global users which means that if you live in the US, you might be able to find something that is relatively close to you, which is not only going to make the shipping quite a bit faster, but it's also a way for you to avoid paying additional fees on import taxes or duties. And this is something that you can specifically select when you are browsing through Vestir Collective, which I really appreciate. So if you live in the EU, you can specifically select sellers that are also based in the EU, or if you're based in Asia, you can find sellers that are going to be selling pieces from neighboring countries or from the same continent, which I think can be incredibly helpful. And a lot of these things will not go through Vestir Collective. I think above a certain amount, you do actually have to send your pieces 
to Vestor Collective once something has been sold, just so they can double check that the posting was authentic and it not only matches the brand criteria, but also the condition because you can not only find a huge amount of pieces and brands, but also pieces in different conditions. So you can find things that are new with tag all the way to vintage pieces and things that have definitely seen better days. Now, moving on to the cons when it comes to authentication. Yes, Vestor Collective does offer an authentication service. However, it is incredibly unreliable. I do have personal experience with this. I'm pretty sure I have talked about this story before, but I, I want to say I have bought a couple of things through Vestor Collective, most, no, not a couple, maybe a, a handful of pieces through Vestor Collective, including a vintage Chanel jacket and also a Dior sweater, a Dior sweater in navy blue, which I had owned in gray, so I knew exactly what the Dior sweater felt and looked like. I really loved that Dior sweater, but I didn't like it enough to spend, I think at the time it was like over a thousand dollars for that sweater. I liked it enough to buy it once, but I didn't love it enough to spend that money again. So when I came across a posting on Vestor Collective for a few hundred dollars for the exact same sweater, but in a different color, I immediately jumped on it. I think the piece came from France. It was shipped to me in a few days and because it was above a certain amount, I had to not only pay for the sweater, but I also had to pay for shipping and an additional 15 euros for Vestier's authentication service. So the piece went from the seller to the Vestier office in France. It was authenticated. Someone allegedly checked it and then the piece was sent to me. Now, one thing that I do have to say that this cashmere sweater came from Vestier in a really basic paper envelope without any bubble wrap, without any tissue paper, which I do get. I mean, if they're all about sustainability and recycling, I get that they're not going to send you a huge package and that's really not what you're paying for. But at the end of the day, I would have expected a little more than just a basic paper envelope, especially considering that the sweater then got pushed through my letterbox. Anyway, I got this crumpled envelope, not even realizing that it had come from best year because I really expected something just slightly more elevated. It's not like I was expecting, as I said, a huge package in a beautiful box, but something just a little bit more perhaps refined. But I opened the envelope, I reached in, I realized that it was a sweater, but as soon as I felt it, I knew that it was not a Dior sweater because I was very familiar with Dior's cashmere and I knew that that's not what it should have felt like. I pulled out the sweater, I looked at the label and even the label looked fake, even though it had the Vestier authenticity tag on it. So as soon as I opened it, I immediately reached out to Vestier. I told them that I suspect that this piece is not authentic. They told me to send it back and I so wish I had taken some pictures, but I really did not want to have anything to do with that sweater. I did not want to tamper with it and then have Vestier tell me that I sent back a fake sweater or anything along those lines. So I sent it back the same day and it actually took me a couple of months of chasing them to get my refund. They never apologized. They never confirmed that the piece that I bought was a dupe or it was a fake. I just one day got a refund and they never said anything to me about it, which is really quite disappointing considering that I not only paid for the authentication, but that Vestier stood behind this piece. I mean, you really don't have to be an expert to know that it was not the real deal. Even the label looked fake. It didn't the label wasn't printed. I don't want to exaggerate and say that it was just a hand printed label, but it definitely did not feel like the kind of labels that you'll get on a luxury piece. So that's my experience with Vestier Collective. And what's really upsetting about it is that if I hadn't been familiar with Dior sweaters, I probably would have thought that it was the real deal considering that it was authenticated by Vestier Collective. It did come with a Dior label and it looked decent. It just did not feel like cashmere and the fit was slightly off. It definitely did not look identical to the Dior sweaters that I had been familiar with. So I feel like if I was a first time luxury consumer, I would have spent 300, over 300 euros on a fake piece and I would have never known. I would have been convinced that I bought 
the real deal. So that has definitely put me off of buying Vestair Collective. And I do think that authenticity is still a big barrier for most people when it comes to buying pieces pre-loved. And this is where today's sponsor comes in, which is Legit Grails. A big thank you to them for sponsoring this portion of today's video, because if you are not an experienced luxury consumer, or you would just like to put your mind at ease, it can be quite difficult to find a service that is able to reliably authenticate pieces and make sure that the piece that you purchased is indeed authentic. Legit Grails is an amazing service. They are a company that is able to authenticate 250 brands and that includes not only their more popular bags but also clothing, shoes and even accessories and they have an over 99.3% just to be exact accuracy rate which they are able to hit such a high score because they blend AI with human expertise. There are a lot of companies out there who solely rely on AI but Legit Creals believes in a more hybrid approach so they will use AI and also the human touch to make sure that the piece that they are looking at is indeed authentic and all you have to do is take the piece that you bought really anywhere outside of the store take some pictures of it. They have very clear guidelines on what pictures they need, what details they need specific pictures of, just to make sure that they come to a well-rounded and accurate conclusion and an accurate reading on whether the piece that they're looking at is real or not. And honestly, the experience could not be any easier and any more straightforward. And you can get results as quickly as 30 minutes and the price I do think is quite fair. It ranges between 25 to 55 dollars and it all depends on how quickly you want to receive results and they were kind enough to give me a discount code to share with you guys which I will make sure to leave up on the screen here. So you can use this on any one of the brands. They have some very popular hyped trendy brands all the way to some of our favorite more premium luxury brands like Chanel and even Hermes. So if you would like to have anything authenticated, whether it's something that you bought recently or a while ago and you would just like to get another seal of approval, this would be a good way to go from the comfort of your own home without breaking the bank. So big thank you to Legit Creals for sponsoring this portion of today's video because had I not been familiar with that Dior sweater, I could have spent a lot of money on something that is just not what I signed up for and not what I paid for. So if you are a big Vestiaire fan, but you are not a luxury connoisseur, at least not yet, and you want to make sure that the pieces you buy are indeed the real deal, Legit Creals might be a good way to go. Unlike Vestiaire Collective, who traditionally did not hold stock and they were purely a marketplace. The Real Real, which is the next brand that we are going to be moving on to, I feel like is a brand that for a long time essentially had monopoly on selling more premium pieces pre-loved in consignment. So when it comes to Vestiaire, as we discussed, most pieces that are sold through Vestiaire actually come from individual sellers. Whereas when it comes to the Real Real, they actually have their own stock that individual people left with them in consignment. So the Real Real exclusively offers consignment, which is something that we'll move on to when it comes to the cons of selling with the Real Real. They are a brand that is US based and they not only have a website, but they also have physical stores at this point, which again can be both a pro and a con. But let's start with some of the pros, which is the fact that the Real Real has a huge range of different brands and a huge range of different pieces. They not only sell bags and accessories, but also shoes and ready-to-wear. In fact, I think they were one of the first resellers who sold ready-to-wear on this scale. Obviously here, I'm not talking about smaller vintage resellers and privately owned boutiques, but a platform that sold pre-loved ready-to-wear on a global scale, which I do think is quite impressive. They also sell jewelry, and if I'm not mistaken, even homeware and home accessories at this point that come from certain designers. So similar to Vestiaire, if you do like treasure hunting and if you like digging through a ton of different postings, I think you will have a lot of fun browsing on the Real Real, but I do have to say that the Real Real 
is slightly more elevated than Vestir is. Their pictures look a little bit better. I do think that their pieces are a little bit more reasonably priced and most things will be authenticated by themselves. Although there have been a lot of issues with the Real Reals authentication service, just because they are, they have grown so quickly, it makes sense that things would fall through the crack. But authenticity, again, is something that you have to be a little bit cautious of when it comes to buying things through the real real. So certainly legit grails is something that you can take advantage of, whether you buy something from Vestir, from real real, or really any other reseller out there. And another con that I think some people will appreciate, or sorry, another pro that some people will appreciate, but I personally find it a con. So it was a Freudian slip. So Something that I think people will appreciate is that they do have their physical stores, which does make them feel a little bit more legit. And you can also stop by to look at pieces up close and personal instead of having to order things online blindly. However, when we move on to the cons, I would like to point out that when it comes to leaving things in consignment with different stores and resellers, it's not something that I personally feel really comfortable with, especially when it comes to the real real, just because I have seen firsthand how roughly the real real handles the pieces that are not really theirs. Again, this is a story that I think I have shared before, but I remember going to, I mean, I've been to the real real store both on Madison and in Soho many, many times just to browse. I don't think I have ever bought anything from the real real. In fact, I'm sure I haven't, but I've been to their stores many times and I actually really enjoyed going when I was quite new to RMS because it allowed me to look at things and play around with them, which you would not be able to do at RMS. So let's say you are dreaming of owning a Kelly bag, but you're not sure if you should get a Kelly 25 or a Kelly 28. Places like the Real Real are a great place to go to look at these things up close and personal be able to compare them, maybe even try them on. And if you find them at a great deal, of course you can buy them on the spot. But even if you want to get them directly from the store, at least you have an idea for what you are putting in a request for. Anyway, I digress. I have been to the Real Real store in Soho many, many times. And I remember this one instance where I was looking at a Kelly wallet in Alligator that was incredibly priced. And I asked them if they had it in any other colors. And I remember them pulling this drawer open that was just filled with Kelly wallets and different wallets in exotic leather. And they were all just stacked on top of each other. There wasn't a single dust bag inside. There was no, there wasn't anything in between the pieces. They were all just piled up and they chucked these pieces in front of me as if they were, you know, a pack of chewing gum. I was just really quite shocked by it because they were still thousands and thousands of dollars. And Personally, if those pieces were mine, I know that it's not something that I would feel comfortable with. So their physical stores, just because their pieces are in consignment and it's not theirs, it's still technically your piece. It's something that I would personally want to be careful with just because I know how incredibly careful I am with my own pieces. And it doesn't seem like that they are, or, or at least that's not what my experience has led me to believe not to mention that it's not only the people working there but also if you have something on display people will touch it they'll play around with it and i do see the discrepancy here because i would not want people to touch my pieces yet i feel comfortable touching other people's items so i do get it i do see the double standard here but that's just personally how i feel and if you do not feel comfortable with you know tens if not hundreds of people going through your pieces handling them it might not be the best place for you to leave your items. Maybe you can ask them not to put your pieces in store, but then I wonder, does that reduce the chances of your piece being sold? I'm not exactly sure, but personally, consignment and real real is just not something that I would turn to when it comes to selling pieces. However, when it comes to buying, they do have a ton of pros, including the fact that they carry a ton of different brands and not only more high-end premium brands, but also up and coming and niche brands. In fact, I think they were one of the first companies that started carrying the rose pieces. While I wouldn't completely write off Vestir and the Real Real, they are just not the platforms that I would personally turn to. 
unless you are a luxury connoisseur and you know exactly what you're looking for or you find something at an incredible price. I would try to avoid both of those platforms personally and I would much rather turn to a brand like Fashion File. The next brand that we're going to be discussing is Fashion File who traditionally or originally I should say were an online platform but at this point they do have a couple of stores in the US similar to the real real they are US based and they have a much more selective range of pieces and brands that they offer for example they don't offer ready to wear they do do shoes but only shoes that are in much better condition so the overall experience to me just feels a little bit more curated and a little bit more luxurious what I really appreciate about fashion file is that they offer both buyouts and consignment now if you leave something in buyout with them that means that you hand your piece over it gets authenticated and as soon as the authentication process goes through you get paid and at that point that piece is no longer yours whereas consignment obviously means that you leave your piece with them and you only get paid when that piece finds a new home. Now, when it comes to consignment, you do get paid a little bit more because Fashion File is not taking as much of a risk. But if you leave something in buyout, which is what I used to do, when I sold pieces through Fashion File, you get paid a little bit less. But you know, once your piece is with Fashion File, at that point, there's nothing for you to worry about. They take care of the rest because, you know, all your ties are cut at that point. So that was my preferred method of selling through Fashion File back in the day. And I like the fact that for most pieces, they'll offer both. What I used to like about Fashion File is that both their buyouts and their consignment were really fair. Their pieces were not too overpriced. However, this cannot be said because I have heard from several people that their buyouts have been decreasing more and more while simultaneously their prices online have just been skyrocketing. So I do think that Fashion File has become quite overpriced. In most cases, you can still find some hidden gems, especially when it comes to less popular pieces. But I know that when it comes to their bags, their prices have really just been hiking over the past year or so. I'm going to leave their commission because of course they do take a commission of your pieces. I will make sure to try to leave their commission chart up on the screen here, which I'm sure has changed quite a lot. But I have heard from several people who regularly sell through Fashion File that their buyouts are not as great as they used to be. I mean, I remember back in the day, it's been years since I last sold something with Fashion File and their buyouts were of course always more conservative than their consignment prices, but I never felt taken advantage of. And I do think that their prices were also, you know, they just made sense. It's not like they paid you a thousand dollars for something, but then they sold that piece for 5,000. I felt that their, their pricing structure just made sense. Whereas now, I'm not sure if the same can be said. If you have any more recent experience with Fashion File, please let us know in the comment section down below. But I still prefer the fact that if you want to sell something, you can and you don't have to leave your pieces with them in consignment. I also like the fact that they are online first. Obviously, they do have a couple of showrooms, but the majority of their pieces will exclusively be available online, which means that even if you leave something with them in consignment, it will go through much fewer hands. And the overall experience of using Fashion File, the site itself is really easy to navigate. I really enjoy browsing. And even if I'm not planning on buying anything, I still enjoy just going on there and having a quick scroll through some of their new in pieces just because the website is really quite easy to use and that's an important factor to consider when you're spending so much money on a luxury piece but if you spend a lot of time on fashion file you will notice how much their prices fluctuate i do think that fashion file is one of the most trend driven resellers out there when it comes to their pricing strategy you can tell that their most more popular pieces are a lot more overpriced than some other less popular pieces or pieces that are in less demand, which makes sense. However, it becomes quite interesting 
when you look at some postings that were available a while ago that were priced much lower than some of their newer postings. So if you see a piece becoming more and more popular, you can track how things start becoming more and more expensive on Fashion Files. So that is just something for you to keep in mind. If you're looking for something really hot and really desirable, you are going to be paying a hefty premium at Fashion File for those pieces, but at least that you know that what you're getting was handled with care and hopefully it was really an authentic piece, but that is just something for you to keep in mind. Fashion File is really quite trend driven. They always keep their finger on the pulse and they make sure that they take advantage of it and my friends this brings us to the end of today's video on my best tips on how to approach buying luxury pre-loved and what places to turn to and which ones to avoid and at the end of the day the most important thing is that you feel comfortable with what you purchased whether that comes directly from the store or from any one of the pre-loved platforms out there. And if you bought something outside of the store and you would like to put your mind at ease and make sure that you were sold an authentic piece, do not forget about legit creas who, you know, they can authenticate over 270 different brands, which to me is really impressive. So big thank you to legit creas for working with me on a portion of today's video and all the details, including my discount code with them will be listed and linked in the info box for you. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I cannot wait to hear your experience in the comment section when it comes to buying pieces pre-loved. Are you a seasoned pre-loved? buyer have you ever bought something pre-loved would you consider buying something pre-loved do you have any experience with any one of these brands please let us know in the comment section because i am definitely not a pre-loved connoisseur but these are just my thoughts i hope you found it helpful and you enjoyed hanging out with me if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and i will see you back here with a new video really really soon